Burnwood, is it not? Don Yates, pleased to meet you. You come very highly recommended. As Chief of the Heralds, let me be the first to say welcome aboard. Why, thank you, Mr. Yates. Rest assured that I will be following your every lead very closely. Say, that reminds me. We're about to have a little Herald get-together up at the house. Just a modest toast to celebrate my forthcoming inauguration as constant. You are, of course, most welcome to join us. I believe you shall make a fine Herald once the training wheels are off. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Capital, right this way, into the lion's den. <laughs> Why don't you take a break, Corvo? We're done here for now, I think. Oh, but don't go too far. I may still need your services later. I'll be closer than you think. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers, the sommelier, to prep the 1945 Grand Paladin and bring it up to the house for our special occasion. Got it, Chief. Mr. Yates wants the 1945 Grand Paladin brought up to the house. Special occasion. What? What, did aliens land on the front lawn? Have the ghosts of Jesus, John Lennon, and Eva Perone unexpectedly come for dinner? Help. Out here, what could possibly be so special? Above your clearance, Flowers. Just fetch it already. Fine. What's the passcode again? Last year of World War II. If you have to look it up, shame on you. A meeting in the root cellar. I'm judging from Yates's choice of wine, some type of celebration. Likely a gathering of heralds come to congratulate Yates on his upcoming promotion. Diana's presence, a calculated risk.
Are you all right, Patron? Uh, I'm fine, Santino. It's just... Oh, the... Sir, I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, Flowers. Guests are waiting. Get yourself patted down. We're still on alert from all those big shot CEOs getting off. I need to search you if you want to pass. That's good. Keep those arms there. Don't move. If I find something, I'm gonna crucify you. Okay. You are good to go. So here's the deal, Flowers. The boss is having a powwow with some employees, and discretion is the name of the game. I'm sure you figured that out already, you being a scholar and all. Don't discuss, disclose, or hell, even contemplate what goes down. Just set your mind to wool-gathering mode. You think you can do that for me, Flowers? Worry not, Mr. Cortazar. I'm the very soul of discretion. Good man. Place the wine on the table. I'll pour it. Decant. Pardon me, your majesty. I have always considered the heralds the unspoken heroes of Providence. The nervous system. Effectively and reliably... Ah, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Flowers, our resident sommelier. I believe he has brought us something... quite special. Perhaps you will educate us, Mr. Flowers. This is the 1945 Grand Paladin. One of only five bottles in existence. The vintage is legendary. The proverbial unicorn wine. The year was hot. The wines super concentrated, and thanks to hail and frost, the production was small. Only 300 bottles were ever produced. And when the vineyard was bombed during the closing days of World War II, only a single crate survived. It is said to have amazingly complex aromas with long savory layers of fruit and spice flavors and a silky texture. Enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Feel free to stick around in case our guests have questions. This wine was gifted to me by the Ark Society in acknowledgement of my firm's legal services. It stands as a powerful reminder that Providence draws its strength not from force, but from partnership. 
We are but a few, and yet together, we are unstoppable. Because we stand united. My friends, loyalty is everything. Which is why we cannot allow traitors into our ranks. Ah yes, here it comes. This woman has waged bloody war on us. More than a dozen heralds and operatives dead. Your colleagues and clients, my friend Ken Morgan. Not to mention the partners themselves, our founders, our benefactors. Make no mistake, this woman's hands are soaked in blood. Our blood. And Arthur Edwards, the new supreme head of Providence, is handing her the keys to the kingdom. Now, does that seem right to you, my friends? Does that sound like loyalty? Absolutely right. right. Perhaps Edwards simply recognizes talent when he sees it. Perhaps this is why I am also in the running to become constant and following this childish outburst. I dare say I am in the lead, Don. What the hell? You're lying, of course, which only proves my point. You can't be trusted, Miss Burnwood. This woman will be our downfall. That is, unless we take matters into our own hands. You are heralds, sworn to protect Providence against all threats, including inside ones. I have devised a plan. Together we can make it work, but you have to decide now, my friends. Are you with me? Yes. I agree. Yes. I'm in. Yes. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. I'm warning you, Yates. This will not go your way. We need to get our story straight. Diana Burnwood died today by the hand of her rogue Agent 47. Revenge for her changing sides. This is what you will all attest to. I agree. Yes. 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 I'm in. A toast then, in her honor. Savor the taste because you never will again. And let me remind you, we are in this together. One goes down, we all go down. Here's to loyalty. To loyalty. To loyalty. Remember, Flowers, you never saw a thing. Not a damn thing.
Good. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping the crime scene like we discussed. Remote, staged accident. Cortazar will bring the package. Get it done. Miss Burnwood. You rolled out the red carpet just for me. Don, you shouldn't have. So confident, even in defeat. I suppose you're not used to danger, always safe behind your screens. Just tell me one thing before we part ways. Why me? Why you? Why would Edwards trust you? Please. It will keep me awake at nights, and I'm 65. I get up four times to piss as it is. Oh, it's simple, really. Edwards is proud. He considers himself the cleverest man alive, and yet we tricked him on Isle of Scale and it's eating him up. He needs to win. Full, unequivocal victory. My recruitment was just the feather in his cap. By the way, you were right about one thing. Yeah, I'm all ears. <laughs> Shoot her! And I will make it my mission to tear down Providence brick by brick. Finish it. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. Won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and dress appropriately. Thank you.
up that suit good. It's done. Now what? Now, we strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Ether Brand's neurotoxin, transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, Bruce